Hi, I'm Bachevor Perian with my course, How to Solve Circuits the Right Way, Once and for All. I also like to call it the joys of circuit analysis. These lectures are based on my book, Fast Analytical Techniques in Electrical and Electronic Circuits, published by Cambridge University Press and available online from any bookseller. This is the last video of my first lecture. And as I promised in my previous video, that I'm going to present you with more joyful circuit analysis to alleviate the pain that I exposed you to in excruciating circuit analysis. I will then pay my respects to Dr. David Middlebrook. Here are the steps for more joyful circuit analysis. We are going to determine the expression of the input resistance of this bridge circuit with a dependent source GMV1 that talks to the voltage across the resistor R1. We are going to derive its expression with GM as a parameter. You learned in my previous videos that you can set the value of any resistor either equal to zero or infinity and then reinstate it with the help of the extra element theorem to obtain the complete expression for the input resistance. It is exactly the same thing with dependent sources. You can set the gain of a dependent source either equal to zero or infinity. When you set the value of the dependent source or the gain of the dependent source to infinity, then the whole circuit reduces to that of an ideal cookbook op-amp circuit. And this is what it would look like when jam is infinity the differential voltage across the input of that op-amp goes to zero. So with GM set equal to infinity, V1 goes to zero. And we want to determine what is the input resistance shown here with GM infinity, or what is the input resistance shown here for this ideal op-amp circuit. So we said with gm equal to infinity, v1 equals to zero. That means that the current through r1 is equal to zero by Ohm's law, which means that the test current flowing into this junction here will continue to flow entirely through the resistor r2, creating a voltage drop itr2 across it. Also, it means that since this current here equal to zero, that the voltage across R3 is the test voltage Vt, which means that the current through R3 by Ohm's law is Vt over R3. Now, the voltage across the resistor Rb is going to be the same as the voltage across the resistor R2 because the voltage drop here V1 is zero. So this voltage here gets copied across R2, rather Rb and that voltage is ITR2. That means that the voltage across R4 is the sum of this voltage and that voltage, and that gives me the current through R4, which is going to be VT minus ITR2 divided by R4. These two currents, I3 and I4, will add at node B to give me the test current IT. And here it is. When I substitute for the test current IT as VT minus ITR2 divided by R4 and for I3 VT over R3, I can divide VT by IT and obtain my input resistance with GM equal to infinity. And this part of the analysis is done. Next. Step two, short the input port, and then replace the dependent current source GMV1 with an independent current source pointing in the opposite direction and determine how much V1 is generated by IT and determine that gain V1 over IT, which is an inverse gain with respect to GM. GM itself is a transconductance this one here is a trans resistance. That's why it's an inverse gain, and that's why we have the bar here. Now, this can be determined by inspection quite easily. The input port 
shorted places R1 in parallel with R3 and R2 in parallel with R4, and those two will be in series with each other. Therefore, you have a current division of IT between RB and the series combination of these parallel two resistors. And here's that current division. That current then, which flows into R3 parallel R1 plus R2 parallel R4, generates a voltage across R3 parallel R1 by multiplying it with R3 parallel R1. And you're done with step two, that is. Step three, open the input port and repeat the same process. Replace the dependent generator with an independent current source pointing in the opposite direction, and once again determine the inverse gain V1 over IT, but this time with the input port open. This too can be determined by inspection quite easily like before. You have a current source IT pumping current into the parallel combination of RB, R1 plus R2 and R3 plus R4. That voltage that is generated then is voltage divided down between R1 and R2 according to this voltage divider. And once again, you're done with the step three. Step four. Now substitute those three independent calculations in the expression of the extra element theorem. Here comes the input resistance Rn with Gm infinity. Here comes the inverse gain with respect to Gm with the input port short. And here comes the inverse gain with respect to Gm with the input port open. And you're done. Four simple steps and none of that horrendous algebra that you saw in the previous video. This is the complete analytical answer of the input resistance with Gm as a parameter. If you want to study the dependence of Grn on Gm for large values of Gm, you see that this is the dominant behavior of the input resistance, while this is only a correction factor. As I mentioned before, we can choose the value of Gm to be zero and apply the extra element theorem, which takes on this form. In it, these two inverse gains are the same as in the previous example. All we need to determine is Rn with Gm equal to zero. When we look at our circuit and we set Gm equal to zero, we realize that we get our good old resistive bridge circuit for which we had determined the input resistance Rn. And so the second meaningful expression of the input resistance is obtained by substituting those three independent calculations in the expression of the extra element theorem. Here comes the input resistance with Gm equal to zero. This was the input resistance of the bridge circuit that we calculated in our very first lecture. Here comes the inverse gain with respect to Gm with the input shorted, and here comes the inverse gain with respect to GM with the input port open. And you are done. Once again, none of that horrendous algebra that you saw in my previous video. This is a complete analytical expression of the input resistance Rn with GM as a parameter. When the values of GM are very small, we can see that this term dominates the input resistance, and this comes in only as a correction factor. I hope you are convinced by now that the methods of circuit analysis that you have seen so far are better than what you have learned in school, or you are currently learning, or perhaps you are teaching. In the rest of this course, you will learn the extra element theorem for any transfer function, the general derivation of the extra element theorem, and the extra element theorem for more than one element, which we call the n extra element theorem. And now I would like to pay tribute to my late professor, Dr. David Middlebrook. Dr. Middlebrook was a professor at Caltech from 1955 until his retirement in 1998. While teaching and consulting in industry, he recognized that the universally adopted method of circuit analysis, which was founded on the matrix equations of linear algebra, was useless for developing a thorough understanding of complex circuits, simply because the requisite algebra would run into a brick wall, algebraic paralysis as he would call it.
The matrix algebra of nodal or modified nodal and loop analysis is supremely well suited for numerical analysis using computers. He had no issues with that. The problem was that a numerical result could not tell you how the gain rolled off at high frequencies or how an unexpected resonance appeared in the voltage gain and how you could damp it out. Since deriving analytical equations using nodal analysis to explain the characteristics of amplifiers and other transducers was an extremely arduous task, he thought of coming up with a better technique. To address the problem of teaching the material more effectively, as well as do his consulting more effectively, he invented the feedback theorem and the extra element theorem. I took his class EE114 the first year I was at Caltech in 1979 to 1980. It was like seeing the light for the first time. Since then, I adapted his techniques in the courses that I taught at Virginia Tech and later joined him to teach his course to industry titled Design-Oriented Analysis. It was a wonderful collaboration. He referred to his techniques as design-oriented analysis using low entropy expressions. With these lectures, I am passing on my own experience of his legacy. Most of the examples that I have used are my own spin of his material. Also included in these lectures are additional techniques that I have developed over the course of years. What I call painless and joyful circuit analysis is essentially the same as what Dr. Middlebrook called design-oriented analysis, and what I refer to as meaningful analytical solutions is the same as what Dr. Middlebrook called low entropy expressions. Dr. Middlebrook passed away on April 16, 2010 in his home in San Dimas, California.